In this Zapier tutorial, you'll learn how to get started with Zapier, how to create your first Zap, and how to generate some ideas on what you can automate in your business. Zapier is a massive platform, so I can't show you absolutely everything it can do in one video unless you wanted it to go for hours, but I can give you a pretty good overview and show you how to get started. I'm Jimmy from JimmyRose.me and if you'd like to learn more about Zapier and all the ins and outs and different tips and tricks about uh, what it can do, check out my course at JimmyRose.me. It's called Zapier Mastery. Or if you'd just like to get some free tips on automating your business and different cool things you can do, just hit that subscribe button below. For now, let's dig into Zapier. This is the classic example of a contact form being filled out by maybe a lead or a client, and then we're gonna add them to our CRM, which in this case is active campaign. So you can always read it as when this happens, do this. And this is the basis of everything you do in Zapier. So we have a trigger at the top, when this happens, and an action at the bottom, do this. So when something happens in one app, do this action in another app. You can actually expand it further than this. So you can see we have when this happens, do this, but then we can use other special blocks in Zapier. This is called a filter. So it's saying only continue if this is a new client and then we're gonna add them to a spreadsheet as well. So we have a trigger and an action and then a filter and another action. So just read this out. When this happens, when we have a contact form entry, so this could be any tool, it doesn't have to be type form, this could be any contact form that Zapier integrates with. So someone's filled out a form, we're going to add them to our CRM, in this case, uh, Active Campaign or other email marketing tool. Now we'll only continue for new clients and then we'll add our new clients to the Google Sheet here. This might seem a little bit complex at first, but it gets easy once you've done it a couple of times. So shortly we will dig in and actually create a Zap in your account. But first I'll show you how to explore Zapier so you can come up with some ideas on what you can automate in your business. I will assume that you have created your account and logged in. So that's where I'm starting from right now. My favorite place to start is the app screen. So if you click this item in the menu, this is the page you'll see. And it basically displays all the different apps that Zapier integrates with. So you can start here just to get some ideas of what's possible using the apps that you're already using. You can search at the top, but for now, let's assume we're using Google Sheets and you can click here. And there's a lot of different information here like help and tutorials, uh, as well as if you click on some of these apps, it'll give you some ideas uh, on how to integrate, say Google Sheets and Gmail together. Um, but I'll show you another method for that in a minute. The thing that I like is if you scroll down the bottom, is this triggers, actions and searches section. And these are lists of the exact things you can do in Zapier with Google Sheets. So we can trigger a zap when a new spreadsheet row is added uh, or a new worksheet is created, for example. And if we switch over to actions, then these are some things that we can do in Google Sheets from Zapier. So for example, we could create a spreadsheet row. So like we spoke about before, a trigger is when this happens, do this. So we could say when a contact form is submitted, that might be another trigger. Uh, we're going to create a spreadsheet row as an action. So just having a look through these lists, you can get a bit of an idea of what is possible using the apps you're already using. So I'm going to jump back now. Uh, let's say we were using Trello, we click here, again, scroll down, and we can look at the different triggers, actions and searches available for Trello. So we could trigger on when a new card is added, that's kind of like a to-do item being added in our to-do list, or if there's some activity in our, in our system, new comments, you know, these are all things that we can trigger a zap based on, and some of the things we can do in Trello are creating new cards, again, like creating a to-do list item, we can add attachments to cards, uh, all from within Zapier. So if you have a look through a bunch of the apps you're using, you'll actually be able to piece together some triggers and actions that might be able to work in your favor. Another cool way to generate ideas is to head over to this explore tab. On this page, you can select apps that you're already using. I'm gonna close some of these ones here. So let's say again, we're using Google Sheets and Trello. You actually just would tick those two options on in here. 
And down here, it will give you some ideas of what you can do using these two apps. So add new Trello cards to a Google spreadsheet. This is something I do to keep a spreadsheet log of all the tasks I've completed in one day. Uh, so just random ideas like that. But let's say we turn off Google Sheets. So let's say we were using Gmail. Uh, we could create Trello cards when certain emails come in. Um, let's try Active Campaign. We could create uh, Trello cards based on new contacts that come in. These are kind of random ideas and you can get a lot more creative than this, but it is a good place to start if you've never used Zapier before. Let's actually dig into creating a Zap now. I'm going to use Active Campaign and Typeform for this to illustrate the classic example of sending new contact form entries, that's what Typeform is a contact form tool, uh, to our CRM. So we'll essentially be replicating one of these to add new contacts from our Typeform uh, to Active Campaign. So let's jump over now. There's a form on our website that people will fill out when they want to work with us. It's created in Typeform, which I already have open here. It's a pretty simple form with a name, an email, what company are you from. I'll quickly just open the actual form so you can see what it looks like. So this is the form that someone would fill out. They'd go through and put in their name, their email, their company. You don't need to watch me actually fill this out, so I've uh, already done it previously. Right now, when someone fills this out, we just get an email and we would have to go and add this person to our CRM manually. Let's say we're using ActiveCampaign as our CRM, and it would be really nice to add someone to our account automatically when someone fills out that form. Back over at our account dashboard, we can go ahead and hit that orange make a zap button. The first thing we'll see is the trigger. So we want to trigger this zap when type form is filled out. So we can search in here and find our app and click it. With Typeform, there's actually only one type of trigger event, new entry in a form. So let's click that and continue. At this point, we need to connect a Typeform account. Because we haven't done it before, it's giving us this big button to sign in to Typeform. So click that. And it opens up this window. This connection window is different for every app. Sometimes it'll look just like this, where it'll be asking for some permissions and to connect. This would actually normally ask me to log into Typeform, but I'm already logged in. So it's taken me straight to this permission screen where I can just accept. And you can see we've connected our Typeform account. So let's go ahead and continue. And this brings us to the trigger options panel. For Typeform, this is really simple. All it wants to know is the form that we want to trigger this zap based on. So we'll open that up and it goes to Typeform and pulls in all the different forms in our account. And this is the one here. And then we'll continue. Now this brings us to the testing step. At this point, if no one had filled out that form before, I would actually go and fill it all out so you can get some demo data in here and then hit test and review. And here's an entry that Zapier has pulled in from Typeform. So we can open this up and have a look at all the different data that came in when I filled out the contact form previously. So we have an email, a name, and all the different fields that we had set up here that I've previously filled out. For now, I'm gonna say done editing and click here to create our action. At this point, you might also want to rename this step because new entry in type form is kind of vague. So let's actually go ahead and rename it to new contact form entry. And this is also handy because it helps you find it again later when you search for zaps from your dashboard. It'll actually search through the text that you've included here as well. On the same note, what if we forget what this actual zap is for? So let's name it as well by clicking here and we'll say send contact form to active campaign. So let's jump down to that action to add this person to our active campaign account. So just like before, we'll search for our app here and click it and have a look through our action events. This time there's a lot more options. So we have to try and find the one that makes the most sense. And in our case, it's going to be to create or update a contact. 
So Active Campaign is actually using the same action to create or update. For some apps, it might be different. There might be different actions for creating and updating, uh, but in this case, it's all in one. We could rename the step at this point, but this one kind of makes sense already. So let's continue on. Notice this time I have accounts created already, so it's given me a drop down rather than a button. So open that up, and here we can select an existing account or connect a new one, which is what I'm going to do. And we get this box again. So this time it's a little bit different. It's asking us to fill out these two fields to connect our account. So how do we do this? Luckily, it gives us some instructions here. And this is usually the case when you are connecting apps in Zapier. It'll give you a bit of a description on how to add them. So it's saying log into Active Campaign, go to My Settings, and then look for the Developer tab and a URL that looks like this. So I'm going to jump over, go to Settings, then Developer, copy this URL, jump back over to this screen and paste that in, and then copy this key in to the bottom box and connect. Jumping back over to Zapier, you'll see that has been added there. Continue. And this brings us to where we choose what data we're actually going to send to ActiveCampaign. You can see that some fields are required and some are optional. Each one of these lines is called a field. Fields like this with the little arrow uh, generally go out and pull in some data from Active Campaign. So it's gone and found the lists we have in that account. So I'm going to select the only one we've got there. And then we need to feed in the email address that came from the contact form. So this button here allows us to insert fields from previous steps. So if I open that up, you can see our trigger step here from Typeform. And this is all the data that came in from Typeform. The name of the field is on the left and the actual data that came in from the previous step is on the right hand side. So we have your email and my email. You can just scroll through these to find it, uh, but sometimes you'll see that there's just way too much to look through. So you can actually use this to do a search for email and it's filtered to the one we want here. This search is actually really good because it will search through the data as well. So if I search for James, you can see it's found every field that contains James in the data. So if you know the email address, you could also just search for that. I didn't mean to add that again, so we can just backspace it. But now this is actually mapping the email address from our trigger into the email address field in the active campaign action. Now let's fill out some of the other data. Looking at first name, if we open this up, unfortunately, we've only allowed for a full name in type form. Thankfully, Active Campaign gives us that as an option, so we can map in the full name here. Let's go ahead and add their company name to the organization field. And finally, set a tag. We don't actually have to use fields. We can just type directly into this box to send this text to Active Campaign every single time. So in this case, maybe we want to identify people that were added to our active campaign through a tag. This will now add the contact form tag to every person that Zapier adds to active campaign. Let's continue. And now it will ask us to test the zap. We have the same options where we can skip the test or test and continue. When you're new to Zapier, I would pretty much never use the skip test option just so you can make sure things are working correctly. So let's go test. And it tells us that it was successful. So we added james at example.com. If I jump over to active campaign and have a look at our contacts, it looks like we can see the contact here. So that's good. So let's jump back to Zapier and click the done editing. Now you can see this box has shown up at the bottom that says your zap is ready and you can turn it on. And we can see it is now switched on. And that's it, your first zap is complete. If you want to keep learning about how you can better utilize Zapier and see some examples of cool zaps, there are a few more videos uh, that I'll recommend at the end of this video and I'll also drop them into the video description uh, below. There's one on how Zapier compares to IFTTT if you're curious and a playlist of my favorite zaps. 
Right now, my account runs around 9,000 tasks every month, which saves me around about 75 hours of work each and every month. So if you'd like to learn how to do that for yourself, and if you want to go from a beginner to advanced Zapier user as fast as possible, take a look at my course, uh, Zapier Mastery at jimmyrose.me slash Zapier. On this page, you'll see uh, my silly head, uh, be able to read about what's in the course and see some results from past students. And if you don't want to learn Zapier yourself, uh, the course can also be used to train other people in your business. Again, that is at jimmyrose.me slash Zapier. That's it for this Zapier tutorial. At this point, there should be some uh, videos and playlists showing up on the screen if you want to continue learning about Zapier. And don't forget to hit subscribe because I release videos like this to help you out with automation uh, regularly. That's it, and I'll see you in the next video.